What's up, you freaking geniuses? So in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to solve exponential equations, all right? And I'm gonna show you how to solve them when the bases are the same and when they're different, all right? So this is the basic idea as to how you solve exponential equations, all right? So here you can see on top, I have uh, three raised to the fifth power is equal to three raised to the fifth power, right? That's obviously a true statement. How do you know? Well, we have the same bases, right? We have a three here and a three here, and their exponents also match up, right? There's a five there and a five there. Okay, so let's jump down here. So again, you can see the bases are the same, right? We have a three here and a three here, right? So if we wanna figure out what the exponent or the x should be equal to right here to make this exponent equal to this exponent, you just set them equal to each other, right? So we're gonna say x plus one is equal to five, right? So you just write x plus one is equal to five. Okay, so then right here, x would be equal to four, right? That'd be your answer. So as you can see, when you have the same bases, it's pretty straightforward how you solve it. All you have to do is set whatever's up here in the exponent equal to whatever you have up here in the other side, in this exponent. So we have six is equal to six raised to the two x minus three, right? Now this one is a little bit tricky, right? Because there's no exponent on this six right here, but there's technically a one. Okay, so we could write this as six raised to the first power, right? Because six raised to the first power is just equal to six anyways, okay? So then we have the same bases, right? We have a six there and a six there. So now we can just set the exponents equal to each other. So we'd say one is equal to two x minus three, right? And then to solve for x over here, let's get rid of this uh, minus three by adding three to both sides, right? One plus three is equal to four. So we get four is equal to two x, right? So then divide both sides by two. So we get x is equal to two. All right, so hopefully that's not too bad. Now let's get into what you do when the bases are different. All right, so let's start with this one right here. So we have five raised to the x is equal to 25. All right, so you might even just be able to do this one in your head, right? This one's gonna be pretty simple, but unfortunately they're not all gonna be so easy that you can do it in your head, right? So how would you solve this one right here? Okay, well, remember the whole point of these is you want the bases to be the same, right? So over here we have a five, and over here we have a 25, right? But one thing you might notice about 25 is that 25 is the same thing as five squared. Okay, so we're gonna replace this 25 with five squared. So we're gonna have five raised to the x is equal to five squared. Okay, now you can see that the bases are the same, right? We have five on both sides, right? Now, so now that we have that, now we can do the, the uh, part of just setting these equal to each other, right? So then we're just gonna have x is equal to two, right? And then that's actually just your answer, right? So then here, x is equal to two, okay? So here's 25, here's 125. Now 25, I can write that as five squared, right? And 125, I can write it, rewrite it as five cubed, right? And if, the, if I do that, then you're gonna see I'm gonna have the same base, right? So that's one way we can go about solving this, right? So 25, again, I'm going to rewrite this as five squared, okay? And then this whole thing is still being raised to the x power over here, right? We're still raising it to the x, and that's going to be equal to 125, which is five cubed, okay? Now here we have a power raised to a power, okay? When you have a power raised to a power, in order to simplify it, you just multiply these two together, right? So then here we would just have two times x. So we can actually re uh, rewrite this as five raised to the two x. And then that's gonna be equal to five cubed. Five cubed, all right? So then now we have the same base, right? So now we can set our exponents equal to each other. So we're gonna say two x is equal to three, right? And then to solve for x over here, we'll divide by two on both sides. Okay, so then we get x is equal to three over two, uh, which that's already reduced, right? So we can just say three over two. Or if you want it as a decimal, we could say 1.5, right? Either answer works. Okay, so uh, this one's gonna be a little bit harder. So here we have nine raised to the x plus two is equal to 27 raised to the x, okay? So again, you can see that our bases don't match, right? We have a nine and a 27, but these are both multiples of three, right? So we could try something like uh, three squared for nine and 27 is the same thing as three cubed, okay? So we can use these to rewrite our nine and 27 so we can match up the bases, right? So again, nine, we're gonna rewrite it as three squared and then we're still raising it to the x plus two, all right, x plus two, and that's gonna be equal to uh, 27's three cubed, right, raised to the x. Now, we have the same bases, right, a three and a three, but the first thing we have to do is simplify all these exponents, all this crap right here. So the way you do that, again, is just multiplying these together, okay? And as you can see, we have more than one term up here, right? We have x plus two. So what you would do is just take whatever your exponent right here, and you can distribute it to each term, right? So you would do two times x, and two times two, okay? So then we're gonna rewrite this as three raised to the, let's see, 
So 2 times x, that's equal to 2x. And then 2 times 2, that's equal to 4, right? So plus 4. And that's equal to, let's see, over here we have 3 times x, right? So just 3x. So this is going to be 3 raised to the 3x, right? Now we have our bases matched up and the exponents simplified, right? So now we can set these equal to each other. So we're going to say 2x plus 4 is equal to 3x, all right? Uh, let's get the x's on one side. So subtract 2x, subtract 2x. Those cancel out. So then we're left with 4 is equal to 3x minus 2x is just x, all right? So then our answer right here is x is equal to 4. All right, so hopefully these have been straightforward enough. Now, let me show you what you do when you have fractions, because that definitely takes a crap all over your work. All right, so here we have uh, 1 half raised to the x is equal to 4. So you can see that one of our bases over here is a fraction, right? So whenever you have a fraction as one of your bases, a lot of the times you're going to have to rewrite this as a negative exponent. All right, so let me show you what I mean. So if we had, let's, uh, let's say we had 2 raised to the negative first power, okay? How would you simplify this? Well, whenever you have a number raised to a negative exponent, you can simplify it as uh, 1 over, and then you put this whole thing in the denominator, right? The only difference being your exponent turns positive when you throw it down here, right? So then here we would have 2 raised to the positive first power, okay? And then if we simplified this, it'd just be 1 over 2 raised to the first power is just 2, right? So then here we'd have 1 over 2. Okay, now the nice thing about this is that it works the exact same way in the opposite direction, all right? So if you want to take a fraction, like 1 over 2, and turn it into a negative exponent, well, you would just say, okay, 2 over here, well, this doesn't have an exponent attached to it, right? But 2 is the same thing as 2 raised to the first power, okay? So then here we have 1 over 2 raised to the first power. And then if we want to change this uh, to a negative exponent, well, you would just take whatever is down here in your denominator, and then you would just bring it out here, and then your exponent over here would just turn negative. Okay, or another one. What if you had 1 over 4? Well, then this would be equal to 4 raised to the negative first power. Okay, what if you had 1 over 10? Well, this would be uh, equal to 10 raised to the negative first power. Okay, 1 over 25? Well, this would be equal to 25 raised to the negative first power. Okay, 1 over 69? This would be equal to 69 raised to the negative first power. All right, so pretty sure you get the hint by now. So whenever you have a fraction, just take whatever's in the denominator, Right? Just take whatever's there, and then you can rewrite it as just a regular number raised to a negative 1. Okay, so as you can see over here, we have 1 over 2. So 1 over 2, again, we can rewrite that as 2 raised to the negative first power, right? And then we're still raising it to this x power right there. And then this is equal to 4. Now, 4, we can rewrite as 2 squared, right? Why would I want to do that? Well, because then we would have the same base, right? Because we already have a 2 over here for our base, and then we would have a 2 right there, right? So then that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to say 2 to the negative first power raised to the x is equal to 2 squared. Okay, and then you can see we're almost done, right? So we have a 2 there and a 2 there. We have the same bases, but we just need to uh, simplify our exponents a little bit. So we're going to say, uh, remember, you just multiply those two together. So negative 1 times x is just equal to negative x, right? So here we're going to have 2 raised to the negative x, and that's equal to 2 squared. Right? So we have the bases matched up, finally. So we can just set the exponents equal to each other. So we're going to say negative x is equal to 2. Right? So then to get rid of this negative sign, we're just going to divide the side, side by negative 1. And what we do to one side, we do to the other. Right? Those cancel out. So then we're just left with x is equal to 2 divided by negative 1, which is equal to negative 2. Oof, now I can breathe. All right, let's solve this stuff. So here we have... 36 raised to the negative 3x plus 3 is equal to 1 over 216 raised to the x plus 1, right? I know this looks disgusting, but again, let's just follow what we've been doing, right? So on this side, um, there's nothing much we can do, right? But here you can see we have a fraction. So 1 over 216, we can rewrite that as 216 raised to the negative 1, okay? So then we're going to have uh, 36 raised to the negative 3x plus 3 is equal to, and then this right here in parentheses, 1 over 216, we're going to rewrite like this, okay? So 216 raised to the negative 1, okay? And it's still being raised to the x plus 1, all right? So x plus 1. Okay, now we just need to try and make the bases match up, right? Now, 36 might stand out, right? Because this is the same thing as 6 squared, all right? And luckily enough, 216 is also a multiple of 6. It happens to be 6 cubed, okay? So then uh, 36 over here, we're going to rewrite as 6 squared, 6 squared, 
and then this is being raised to the negative 3x plus 3. And then that's going to be equal to 216. All right, let's not mix this up too much. So 216 right there, we're going to rewrite as 6 cubed, okay? 6 cubed right there. And then this is still being raised to the negative first power, right? So we're still raising this to the negative first power, okay? And then this whole thing, again, is still being raised to the x plus 1, right? I know it's getting a little hectic with these exponents. We got to keep tracking them a little bit, all right? Now we can start simplifying some stuff, right? Because you can see we're almost there, right? So we have a 6 there, a 6 there. We just need to simplify all this exponent crap, all right? So uh, first of all, over here, remember, we just need to uh, distribute, right? We, or multiply it all together so we can distribute. So we're going to say 2 times negative 3x and then 2 times positive 3, okay? So first of all, we have our 6 and then 2 times negative 3x, negative 6x, and 2 times 3 is positive 6. And then over here, we have the same base, right? We have a 6. And then we just need to simplify the exponents over here. And in order to do that, we just have to multiply them all together, right? So let's do what's inside these parentheses first, right? So first, 3 times negative 1, that's equal to negative 3, right? So then we're going to have negative 3, and then we're multiplying it by this x plus 1 out here. Okay, so then again, we can just distribute, right? We're, we're going to multiply negative 3 by the x and by the 1, right? So negative 3, x, 3 times x is negative 3x. And negative 3 times positive 1 is negative 3. Okay, so then uh, this, again, is our exponent over here, right? Negative 3x minus 3. All right, so now we finally have our two bases right here, right? So now we can set the exponents equal to each other. So negative 6x plus 6 is equal to negative 3x minus 3. Okay, so then let's get all the x's on one side. So add 3x, add 3x. Okay, and we'll get the numbers on the other side, right? So we'll say minus 6, minus 6. All right, so then those cancel out. So then over here, negative 6x plus 3x, that's negative 3x, and that's equal to negative 3 minus 6, which is negative 9. All right, so then over here, we'll divide both sides by negative 3. Okay, then we get x is equal to negative 3 divided by, or sorry, negative 9 divided by negative 3, which is negative, or sorry, that's equal to positive 3, right? Negative divided by negative is a positive. All right, now let's talk about some radicals. So here we have 8 raised to the x minus 2 is equal to the square root of 8, all right? Now, whenever you have a square root, taking the square root of a number is the exact same thing as raising it to the 1 half power, okay? So then uh, over here, the square root of 8, this is the exact same thing as just saying 8 raised to the 1 half power, okay? So then that's what we're going to do here. That's how you get rid of the radicals, all right? So here we're going to say uh, 8 raised to the x minus 2 is equal to 8 raised to the 1 half power, right? And then here, you can see we have the same basis, so we can set the exponents equal to each other. So we're going to say x minus 2 is equal to 1 half, right? So then uh, just add 2 to both sides, right? Add 2. So then here we get that x is equal to 2 plus a half is equal to 2 and a half, right? Which is the same thing as 2.5, right? Either answer works right there. All right, let's try one more over here. So. Uh, here we have the fifth root of 7, and that's all raised to the x, is equal to 7 raised to the 2x plus 3, all right? So, again, the goal is trying to get rid of this radical, right? So, as you can see, we in this one, we have a number that's right here next to our radical symbol, okay? This number tells you what number goes in the denominator right there, okay? So, since we have a 5 right here, this is going to be the exact same thing as saying 7 raised to the 1 fifth, okay? So, for example, if we had the fourth root, of 7 written like this. This would be the exact same thing as saying 7 raised to the 1 fourth, okay? Whatever number you have right here next to the radical, that's what goes in your denominator for, for the fraction, okay? So again, this is the same thing as saying 7 raised to the 1 fifth, okay? So we're going to say 7 raised to the 1 fifth, and then this is all being raised to the x power, right? And then this is equal to 7 raised to the 2x plus 3, right? So we're almost done. Uh, we have the same bases, 7s, right? But we just need to simplify this exponent over here. So 1 fifth times x, that's equal to x over 5, okay? So then here we're going to say that 7 raised to the x over 5 is equal to 7 times 2x plus 3. Okay, so now we truly have our bases matched up with the exponent simplified. So we're going to say that x over 5 is equal to 2x plus 3. 3, all right? So we're going to try and get the x's on one side and the numbers on the other, right? So over here, uh, let's keep the x on this side. Let's get rid of this 5, and we're going to do that by multiplying by 5, right? And what we do to one side, we do to the other. So we have to multiply this whole side by 5 also, right? So then on this side, these 5's cancel out. So then we're just left with 
x is equal to, and then this 5, we're just going to distribute it in here. So we're going to say 5 times 2x is equal to 10x. And then 5 times 3 is equal to 15, right? Positive 15. Okay, and then over here, uh, let's move the x's to that side. So we're going to subtract 10x from both sides. Those cancel out. So x minus 10x is equal to negative 9x, right? And I'm going to scroll down just a little bit. So we're going to say negative 9x, and then that's equal to 15, right? And then here, lastly, we just have to divide both sides by negative 9 to get rid of that negative 9. So then these cancel out. So then here we're going to say that x is equal to 15 divided by negative 9 which is equal to negative five over three, right? That's 15 over nine reduced, five over three. So here is your answer. So if you found the video helpful, definitely leave a thumbs up down below. And if you have any other questions or wanna see any other examples, just let me know in the comment section below.